Hello again. Uh, welcome back. Here we are, Abe and Alessandro, and we are looking at Open R and DR and mm -hmm. images and, and color buffers. Exactly. So, what is now? I mean, we have seen before that image. If you pop, put the cursor over it, you know, tells that it's a type. As a type, is a color buffer. Mm -hmm. Is there a way we can instantiate a color buffer apart from loading an image from file? Why would we want to do that? Uh, well, we want to do that because this would, would allow us to, namely, have a way to manipulate uh, the image and save the result in some somewhere else, which yeah. is exactly the role of this uh, of the color buffer. Think of the color buffer as a texture. Okay, right. so. So there's lots of effects we can apply, and that's what we're going to try. We're going to take the image we loaded, and we're going to do something to it. Mm -hmm. We can example. manipulate it in some way, yeah. but we don't want to alter the original mm -hmm. image. We want the result of this manipulation to be saved somewhere. And this somewhere is going to be a color buffer. Yeah. Okay, we can cool. try Gaussian blur, for yes. example. But first of all, how do we instantiate right. color for, buffer? For using the blur, we need a place to store the result. Mm -hmm. And that would be, uh, we can call it CB for color buffer. Mm -hmm. And there's some constructor method here, mm -hmm. and we have to specify the width and the height. Exactly. So as I said, think of it as a texture, and it is going to have a width of, and then a height. And we, but we can extract these properties from the image itself, so to make them match. Yeah, because we, yeah, we want to create an effect for the original image, so I'm so going to use each pixel of one image has to mm -hmm. correspond to the picture to a pixel yeah. in the text. So we could do a different size, but yes, it's easier but like this. Yeah, it's easier. Okay. So now we have the color buffer where to store the effect mm -hmm. result, mm -hmm. and we want an effect. And I will just pick up, pick this one, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's. We have some default parameters we yes. can... Yes, so f for the time being, let's use the yeah. default parameters. And how do we apply the blur now to our image and save it on the color buffer? That's what we want to do, right? Well, so it's very easy, it's called apply. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we apply the blur mm -hmm. and we say from where... So, we so source and target. Source and target. Super. Yeah, and that's it. And um, that's it. Now we have a blurred image mm -hmm. in this text in this color buffer yes so now how do we visualize the yes. color buffer yeah instead of showing the original image we just mm -hmm. show the blurred image so now we expect that we, sh we should see a blurred version of the image we have seen before let's right? see if it's true let's see let's hope <laughs> i don't know if the default blur values is not it's this not so much no but why because i mean we can change some the, the f default right blur values okay. probably the, I don't know, spread we have or window. spread and window. Mm -hmm. We can try with spread. I don't yeah. know what's the default value. If I control click. I think it's 1.0 probably. Low, high, ah, here. The window is 5, uh, spread, spread is 1. Spread is 1. Yeah. Okay. And I would say that spread is what uh, controls the blurriness of it. So somehow. what is it? 10. <laughs> it's know. a lot. Like, but let's do this. <laughs> let's do this. And what about the window also? Yeah. Let's put, put a window, I think, it, yeah, it, it accepts an integer. Yeah. So okay. So, so just two values. See if now it's more obvious. And yes, mm -hmm. now it's definitely obvious, yeah. and we can also see some artifacts from the blur algorithm yeah. appearing, right? Yeah. These kind of squares mm -hmm. type. This is most probably how the algorithm is implemented. Yeah. Okay. All right. But um, now we could go back and change parameters, change mm -hmm. the values here, and see the different effect. Mm -hmm. But is there a way we can change these parameters without having to stop and run again and see in real time what's the effect yeah. of this? Fortunately, there is. Okay. Um, because, yeah, uh, OpenRNDR comes with another extension, which is, is for creating uh, user interfaces. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's also almost one or two lines. Mm -hmm. I could say I could create this GUI. Mm -hmm. Is it like that? Yes. GUI. Yeah. And then we uh, we can add uh, the effect to this GUI. Mm -hmm. So GUI dot add um, blur. 
Ah, interesting, because usually the way I do it, I basically create parameters and mm-hmm. I attach them to the effect. <laughs> so into extend, yeah. I would have uh, that the window and the spread are some variables mm. that are controlled by the GUI. I didn't know you could do this. Most effects have already... Ah, this uh, is awesome. Okay. So you can just add these two lines. Okay. I think we have to extend, right? We have right. to extend yes. uh, GUI, I believe. I, I yeah. And I think if we run the program, then this this last line will add the mm-hmm. GUI, make it visible. That you can activate it with F12 or, yeah, or yeah. F, F11. F11. Uh, so if I press F11. Ah, you see, now it has so basically see, we didn't have listed to all the parameters yeah, of the, f- ah. the effects. And now we can try. Uh, do we see any I, change? I think, no, and I think ah. it's because. Mm-hmm. The well, applied uh, <laughs> thing, it's outside the right. extend. We only apply the effect one exactly. time. Exactly. Because yeah. remember that what's in program is sort of what's in setup mm-hmm. in other frameworks. Yeah. So. Yeah, this part only runs one time, so we just need to move this line mm-hmm. into our draw loop. Yeah. So now it calculates the effect on every frame. Mm-hmm. And let's see. So now we have an interactive GUI. Whoa. Whoa, okay. <laughs> uh, yes. The, the gain. Excellent. Uh, I guess we can Excellent. make it sharper. Right. Oh, that's too low. Yeah. And window size. I don't know. Yeah, you can play with the values. Right. So, okay. So um, we have introduced uh, color buffers, we said, mm-hmm. as a way to um, save. Uh, what was happening to our image, the mm-hmm. effect f- uh, applied to our image. But in principle, if you reason only from the point of view of you know, data type, mm-hmm. you could apply the blur to the image itself. But right. what would happen in this case? I guess it, then it will make it more and more blurry. Exactly. So at each, at each loop, you would modify the actual image, the, the color buffer containing the original image, so you would accumulate yeah. effect, which is something that sometimes you want to do. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, cool. There was one thing I wanted to check. L- let's look at these values. Um, mm-hmm. It's 1.4, 1087. If I close the program and I start it again, it saves them. Yeah. Yeah. So by default, the values are saved in a, I think it's a JSON file or something. And it's automatically loaded. So if you have a big GUI here and you find something that really works nice on your program, then right. the next time you open, okay. everything is as you left. That's great. <laughs> That's very because convenient. It allows for, I mean, this is very useful because you don't have to stop and run and mm-hmm. you can do little modifications and yeah. you, you don't go out of the flow, as, yeah. I like, as I like to say. But let's do something fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Let's uh, animate one of these parameters. Okay. Okay. How do we do that? Uh, I guess we can just throw in here some line to yeah. maybe maybe before applying it. Yeah. Blur dot spread. Spread exactly. Let's do something like uh, two dot zero, and let's os- make oscillate these with a sine wave, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, yeah. Exactly. And I have to. So these are this basically is in a certain sense sorry for the pun but blending mm-hmm. the use of effects and the programmatic aspect of yeah. uh, you know the fact that we use code. Yeah. So So, so now we should see the spread oscillate. Right. right. Let's see it, it should even move in the GUI I guess. Yeah, you can see it here yeah. animated. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so you can have this basically also as a way to control what your parameters are doing while yeah. you are uh, mm-hmm. while you are uh, animated animating them. Yeah. Okay. And as you was as you were mentioning, uh, all the effects use basically a similar template with respect a similar behavior with respect to GUIs. Mm-hmm. So you take if we take another effect like mm-hmm. let's go, I don't know quickly to the, uh, or uh, like, like for instance, I don't know, another type, zoom blur, let's uh-huh. say zoom blur, or... Uh, I, think, I think that might be a bit heavy, and I'm right on now in a very slow computer. Okay, okay, okay. But what about distortions? Like, perturb, I've yeah. used this very often. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, of course, the internal parameter of the uh, of the filter are different because mm -hmm. maybe window and spread yeah. will not be parameter of perturb. No, but the GUI will take care of yeah. that for us. Right. So we just need to maybe at the beginning uncomment the first line in uh, in uh, the extend because we will not have ah well, I mean we will not have blur anymore. Uh, we can apply both effects. Oh, we can apply both effects. Why not? <laughs> uh, why not? Yes. GUI add perturb. And I guess the GUI will also create different folders for the parameters. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So now we, I could run it and it's still not doing anything because we are not applying mm -hmm. the effect, but yeah. I can just show the GUI. Yeah. And by default, they are collapsed. Okay. There's an option for that. See, okay. per Perturb has a lot of uh, settings here. Okay. But uh, now, now this is interesting because if we want to cum accumulate the effect, mm -hmm. we should not apply the effect to image and save on uh, the color buffer, but we can apply it to the color buffer and save it to the color buffer itself. Uh huh. Right. What will we get then? Like we would get first the blur uh -huh. and then the perturbation applied right. to the blur. Yeah. Right? I think the values are probably going to make fade very quickly, but we can try. We the, can try, okay. Uh, unless we set very small values to the effect. Yeah, okay. But let's see, if we, here we apply this into that, yeah. and then we could do perturb. And now we need to apply it to CB itself, Yeah. right? We could apply CB into CB. Yeah. Uh, for many effects, this works. Mm -hmm. In some effects, this is not possible. You, you cannot uh, use a sort and target as okay. the same one. But probably it's because of the algorithm behind the right. effect, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so, well, first we're gonna see now without accumulation. Let's see what this does. With what do you mean without? Uh, because we are not uh, um, every time we take the original image. Oh we yeah, yeah. Blur sure, it. sure, sure, sure. This is not cumulating, but it's com like it's combining, compounding yeah. both blur and perturb. Uh, so I don't see if it's doing anything yeah, actually. Yeah, probably these are very. Uh, Did we miss something, or no, maybe? No, no, no. You have to apply blur first. Ah, uh, you don't want to apply blur. blur. We are applying blur first. Okay, and then. Perturb oh. after. Yeah, but uh, we cannot see the effect. Maybe it's one of these cases where <coughs> you cannot use the same source ah, and target. I see, I see, I see. So we could, tr just to tr try, we can make another color exactly. buffer. Exactly, yes. <coughs> and then yeah. then yeah. we convert the first, in or we apply the effect to from CB1 one to the other. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we display CB2. CB2. Exactly. Let's okay. see if this works better. Because the effect of perturb should be very visible. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I see. Yeah, and it's uh, very extreme yeah. effect. Ah, I see. You can play with the different values. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. And then we can play with the values also on, on the blur to show that the blur is accumulating. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's been applied before. Okay, mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. This is. Super. Okay, so we have seen how to uh, create color buffers, how to use basically filters, and how to apply. Mm -hmm. uh, how to use a GUI. How to use a GUI, and uh, so basically use parameters that you can use in real time without, yeah. without having to stop. And uh, in the next video, we will talk about how to combine also all of these in a sort of layered approach mm -hmm. to image um, manipulation. See you okay. in the next video. See you in the next video.